The next WAN technology we want to talk about is a VPN, a virtual private network. And the cool thing about a VPN is it can allow us to have a private conversation over an untrusted network like the internet. So a VPN actually gets established over your internet connection. At least it can work that way. Let's take a look at a few benefits of a VPN. Number one, like we just said, we can use existing broadband technologies that we may already have in our home or small office like DSL or cable. And this is a very scalable solution because if we need to add on a new client, a new site, that client or that site, they just need internet access and then they can connect back to us at the main site. Of course, that main site that we're connecting into, whatever we're using as a VPN concentrator there, maybe a Cisco ASA, an adaptive security appliance, maybe a Cisco router, it has to have capacity to handle all of these incoming VPN sessions. But that's about it. And thirdly, as we mentioned, we are able to securely transmit data over an untrusted network like the internet. This is one of the reasons years ago people would use Frame Relay or they would have a leased line connection between two sites because they didn't want to send that traffic over the public internet. It was private. It was confidential information. However, now we have the ability to protect information flowing over that VPN. And Cisco gives us two broad categories of VPNs. Number one, we have a site-to-site -site VPN. That's what we have here. We've got location A, we've got location B, and we have the routers at each site, or these could be adaptive security appliances, but here I've got routers at each site that are acting as the endpoints in this VPN. In other words, this connection is totally transparent to the end user. We don't have to load up any special VPN client software on our PC. No, we just go to the router and the router is going to encrypt the traffic and send it over a VPN tunnel over to the other router. Another type of VPN that we have is a remote access VPN. A remote access VPN is where the PC or the device connecting into the VPN, that's where the authentication is going to be done. We've got a couple of options that use SSL, Secure Sockets Layer. With one option, we do not have to install any special client software on the PC. We can just use our web browser and using HTTPS, we're going to be able to connect to a website, maybe back at the main office, to give us access to that main office's network. This is called a clientless Cisco SSL VPN. Maybe you're visiting a public library and you need to securely get back into your office. Well, this is an option for doing that. Another option is to install some client software on that device. Maybe you install the Cisco AnyConnect SSL VPN software. And for years, here's what I've been running. I've been running the Cisco VPN client on my machine to get back to my corporate office. But the bottom line is we have different VPN client options. Your operating system may come with a VPN client. But let's talk for a moment about the actual technology that is going to secure communication between these sites. The most popular way of doing this is to use something called IPsec, which is short for IP security. Let's discuss IPsec in a bit more detail. IPsec is going to allow us to protect data flowing between a couple of different sites. It's going to give us several benefits. For example, it's going to give us confidentiality through the encryption of our data. It's going to give us data integrity, making sure that data has not been modified in transit. That's done via a hashing algorithm. It's going to give us authentication, where parties at each end of the tunnel have to prove they are who they claim to be. And it's going to give us anti-replay protection, so somebody could not do a packet capture of a successful login and then play that back to get logged in again. And I wanted to show you through a metaphor what it's like to set up an IPsec tunnel. It's really a tunnel within a tunnel. On the outer side of this IPsec tunnel, we have an Ike Phase 1 or an Isochemp tunnel. That's what's represented by this box. Now, the actual data is not being protected by this tunnel. Why do we need this Isochemp, this Ike Phase 1 tunnel? Well, it's within the protection of this outer tunnel that we negotiate the configuration of the inner tunnel. This is the IP phase two or the IPsec tunnel. It's within the IPsec tunnel that our data is actually gonna flow. It's actually gonna be protected. So right now, we have data going through that inner tunnel. Now, you don't see it here because it's protected. You don't see it here because it's all encrypted. The point is, 
The outer tunnel is used to negotiate the configuration of the inner tunnel and the inner tunnel through its encryption and hashing algorithms, that's going to protect the inner data. Of course, if we were to take away all the tunnel headers, we got rid of the outer tunnel and we got rid of the inner tunnel, then we would see our traffic as represented here by this bottle of orange juice. But there is a downside to IPsec that I want you to know about. IPsec can only protect unicast IP traffic. What about multicast? What about broadcast? Well, what a lot of people do is play a little trick. They take their IP unicast, broadcast, multicast, as well as non-IP traffic, and they encapsulate those packets in a GRE tunnel. So we've got a GRE tunnel inside of an IPsec tunnel. Because GRE, it's going to be able to encapsulate just about anything we could send out of an interface. And if you take a look at a GRE packet, what is it? It's a unicast IP packet, meaning that that GRE packet can be protected by an IPsec tunnel. And at the CCNA level, we're not going to get into the configuration of an IPsec tunnel, but I do want to show you how to configure a basic GRE tunnel. Let's do that next. Let's see how easy it is to create a GRE tunnel between these two routers. Notice that we've got IP addresses assigned to the physical interfaces already. 10.1.1.1 on router R1, 10.1.1.2 on router R2. What we're going to do is define a virtual interface on each of these routers, a virtual tunnel interface. Here's how this works. Let's go into global configuration mode and let's just create out of thin air a virtual tunnel interface. I'm going to say interface tunnel and we give it a number. I'll just say tunnel 1 and we say who's the source. I'll say tunnel source is going to be the IP address of the serial 1 slash 0 interface. It's going to be 10.1.1.1 and I'll say what's the destination. It's going to be the far side of that serial link. The tunnel destination is going to be 10.1.1.2. Now, since I'm in this interface configuration mode, I need to assign an IP address to this interface. It's going to be on a different subnet. I'm going to say that this tunnel interface has an IP address of 172.16.1.1 with a 30-bit subnet mask. Let's go do the same thing on router R2, just pointing back in the other direction. On router R2, let's go into interface tunnel 1, and we'll say the tunnel source is the IP address on this router, 10.1.1.2, and we'll say the tunnel destination is the other side, 10.1.1.1. Let's assign an IP address. It's going to be on the same subnet as the IP address we assigned over on router R1. Let's make it 172.16.1.2 with a 30-bit subnet mask. And we're done. It's that easy to create a tunnel. Let's make sure we have connectivity across this tunnel. Can I ping the tunnel interface on R1? Let's try. Ping 172.16.1.1. Yes, I can. That is successful. Let's give a couple of show commands also to confirm this configuration. If I do a show IP interface brief, we see that this virtual tunnel interface is showing up side by side with our physical interfaces. It's in the up up state. And I can do a show interfaces tunnel 1 to see more specific information about it. For example, I can see that we're using GRE encapsulation. That's what we said is a good combination to use with IPsec. And we can also see the tunnel source and destination. Well, that's going to wrap up our video, which gave us an introduction to virtual private networks, VPNs.